today we fished out of Manistee here and Manistee is like central in Lake Michigan and it's a very good port because there's really deep water out front of Manistee so fish pretty much live here year round and it's uh it's you can always go out there and catch a fish so I love it here I moved here because it was good not because I'm a native here but I've been doing this now 32 years and uh uh, we had a little bit of a challenging day today. A few days ago, the water flipped over and uh, it was like 49 degrees in the harbor. And a few fish came in, but the majority of them went way out and so they got all scattered and everything. Uh, we've had south winds for two days now. It's starting to get back together and they're starting to all, uh, all gather together on the shelf again. So a few more days, it'll get even better. But it's prime time right now up in Manistee here. First fish out of the morning feels like a He's like a pretty nice king. And, uh, rigor with meat, right? You know how far it is? Or you is there a counter? No, oh, he's down. He didn't take out too much line though. There we go. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, oh. nice fish oh, too. Forward, Mark. All right, try that again. Coming in hot. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice, nice buck here on a rigger with a meat rig. Get some good action. I haven't got three lines in the water yet. Hey, quit making noise over here. Come on. Keep it down over here. Man, can't I just drink my coffee? <laughs> We've had years ago where you could go out here and get 15, 20 of them. And, and it's not saying that you would disrespect the fish, but when you catch a lot of fish, you know, it's, it becomes easy. Now it's a little challenging. However, the fish get, uh, they're a lot bigger right now. There's not as many, but they're eating really good and you're getting big fish. So I've always said, I'd rather go out and get one big one than a bunch of little ones. It, I don't know, something about us having to get big fish. That's what we do, you know, catch big fish, makes you happy. Sun's about to show up here on Lake Michigan. And guess what? We are hooked up again. Don't be afraid to reel on that thing there. There you go. Getting the hang of it. There you go. Walk back, walk back, walk. Walk back. Yep. Got him. This is my first Great Lake salmon. I can't say that uh it was not surprising. This thing has a lot of big teeth, it looks like. It's very heavy. Got a screamer on here. And yes, that is an antique, but it works. Don't pick on the freaking antique that has the fish on it. It's got be, We need more antiques out here. Okay. The sun has just come up and the fish are reacting by being active. Oh, look out. If you've never seen a reel like that, oh. you weren't born First in the 21st century. <laughs> Come on, whales, Come on, whales. Yeah, right down right here. Woo! Son. A little better. Yeah. Another nice Lake Michigan salmon. I uh, hit a high diver back about 200 feet with blue, blue fire brine meat on a meat rig. It's a good quality fish here this morning. Hi, today we use this and uh, these meat heads and this is what we caught most of our fish off of. I just want to show you how it works. You take a piece of cut herring or, or cut value, you stick it in and you kind of shove it up as far as you can, hang on to it, then you take a toothpick. And I use this first hold towards the tail, push it through there and when you can see the tip of that, then you just move it back and forth and break it off. Oh, the toothpick in the water, okay. Then, you wanna make sure that that tail comes down, you don't want that hook to grab the tail. Now this is a glow head, so first thing in the morning you wanna light it up. And these are, these are called teasers, and these are by Rapture. Rapture makes the teasers, and then this is a spin doctor, and this is from Dreamweaver. So you have your spin doctor, and this rotates and gives it a whip for all these. And, and these look like fish to the salmon. And so when he gets the scent on the back of this, 
of that ballyhoo or herring, then that's what attracts them. So this is all I ever used to use. However, now you can take this fire gel and this is anise. So, or, you know, it smells like licorice. They, they want nuts on this today. This is what we caught them off of. So I rubbed it on the tip of the head here and barely dipped the hook. You don't want to dip the hook so much that it looks gob, you know, like a big gob on there because you need it to fluctuate. So you need it to move. So just try to get it here and, you know, on the sides. It glows on the side. So, you know, you don't want to cover too much of that up. But what this does is give it that extra scent because they bleach out really quick. They, you lose the scent after a period of time. And this stays on. I mean, I bring it in, there's still some on it. So you do it once or twice a day and, and you're doing pretty good. Okay, this one's herring right here. All you have to do is just, you can either dip it in there, but if you put a little on your finger, just rub it on the head here and a little bit on the sides and get the hook. I like to dip the hook because if you dip it, you get it saturated. So that's all you need. A little bit goes a long way. And you know, when you think you need to change your meat and put a new piece of meat on it, just get some of this stuff and rub it along the back here and you're ready to roll. It's, it's very, very, very powerful. So I think it brings fish in from far away. Uh, there's quite a few boats, but it is August in Manistee and it attracts people from all over the United States here. So people, you'll see different license plates from everywhere, but for, for uh, freshwater salmon, I'd have to say this is the capital of the world here. Lake trout aren't coming up the rivers or, or anything. You can once in a great while catch a lake trout up the river, but lake trout stay out in Lake Michigan. Coals are starting to migrate. They come up and spawn right after the king. So the coals will be plentiful out front and more so like you've seen in Platte Bay, which is only about 40 miles from here. But we get to run right in front of us too. We just don't have as many of them. And then our kings are, are awesome. They're going on right now. Steelhead will start up in pretty much like the end of September, beginning of October, the water starts getting colder. They come up to the top more and they come in a little bit more. People say they follow the kings in, but I don't know if that's really true. All I know is that uh, in September, October, you get a, a good cold front and that starts the beginning of the steelhead. Hey there. You think, you you think he's going to the lighthouse? This is the red one. This has got... Uh, He's going all the way to the lighthouse. He's past the lighthouse. Past the lighthouse. By lighthouse, we mean that point way out there. This thing is running. Ooh. Hello. Where are we going? Oh boy. You know what I'm happy about? You're going to reel this one in. <laughs> Don't look at the camera crowd by the Mark Pro Fisherman. All right, we're back 15 minutes later. At 84 feet. 84 feet returning. Mark, when's the last time you reeled in a salmon? Uh, Back in the 60s? Is that an insult to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. This is a bacon boy. Got him. All right, this one hit the uh, anise on a red rig. Nice fish, but really good. And uh, I don't know what you like this. Here we go Our again. Pop! Here we go again. This boy's running for the hills, for the sand dunes. Oh my God. Hello, where are you going? Slow down, baby. You sure you want this one? George? Yes. This one's got a lot of... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Man, it's a good piece. still going. I don't need to walk 20 miles a day or ride a bike to crank one of these things up. All right, so this thing was all the way out, 800 something feet. All right. And we have battled our way back to 66. We think this is a big fish. I know it's a big fish. And we, sorry, we know, know. we know. When it starts fish. going sideways of the boat, you know it's big. We're getting close. Ooh, I saw the silhouette. Big, right? Yeah, it's a nice fish. I ain't swimming here no more. 
<laughs> Look That's at this. That's a beautiful beast. one, huh? That's a beast. Wow, this thing's a big one here. We've been getting some big ones here, but this is this is pretty good. You seen this went after that anus. So that's two off of there. Today's episode of Potsky Outdoors comes to you from Lake Michigan, where we're on the western shore of the state of Michigan. We're out here with one of our favorite guides. Reason being, he is like an encyclopedia when it comes to trolling. Anybody that knows Mark Chimura of Peer Pressure Charters knows he's been on almost every TV show on the planet. Matter of fact, half the TV shows this guy has been on, they're not even around anymore. They were so long ago. He is an absolute wealth of knowledge, which is why we wanted to come out here and fish out of Manistee with him today. He's kind of one of the godfathers of catching salmon in this area. And if anybody could show us how to catch him, we knew it would be him. Now, we actually went out twice with him. The first time you'll see our good friend Kyle McClellan of XXL Chrome Chasing joined us. We got out there and we fished about an hour and a half. And all of a sudden, guess what? The weatherman was wrong. Imagine that. The weatherman was so wrong, we got wiped out, had to come in right away. So in that first hour and a half, we ended up catching, I think, four real quality salmon. And we only had two hours on the water at the tops. So we came back out four or five days later and we were still in town. We went out with Mark again and just caught some monsters, including a 30 pound whopping king salmon. You'll notice that this area, it's about, you know, oh, 45 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes from most of the tourist areas nearby, whether you're talking about Ludington, whether you're talking about uh, uh, Traverse City, you know, all of the Northern Michigan hotspots. It's one of the prettiest places around. You'll find people all along the beaches. You'll find beautiful lighthouses and some of the largest salmon in all of the Great Lakes. Now, we caught those salmon pretty much on one thing. We did catch one coho George caught on the last day on a spoon. However, most of our bites came on meat rigs, and we had two meat rigs. We either had a blue firebrine meat rig or a natural firebrine meat rig. Mark always uses chartreuse. However, on this trip, they hit the other one so much we didn't even bring the chartreuse out. But the one thing that Mark has been doing differently is he's been using a lot of scent on those meat rigs. Now he's not covering the whole thing in it. He's taking it, he's putting it on the head of the meat rig, and he's putting it on the hooks. Why is he doing that? Well, with the new fire gel, he's using the anise and the herring to add a greater scent trail. Doing that today just kept us in the bite all the time. What was interesting is the second time we came out here was on a Saturday morning. We saw a line of almost five miles of boats trolling. And we believe the expertise of Mark knowing exactly what depth to be in combined with the scent kept us in the strike zone and put some beautiful fish on the deck. Do the same thing just like Mark did and you too could have the success just like we did. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.